What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is a match review of Chelsea's 5-2 win away at Molyneux against the Wolves in the Premier League. What an interesting game. Frank Lampard did different things. There was a certain hat-trick hero and some great goals. Before we do get into today's video, guys, I want to ask that you do subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure you do hit the bell notifications icon because I upload every single day and I want you guys to keep up with the content. If you want to help me out also, why not like the video? Right, so let's get straight into it, man. This game was different we all saw the lineup and thought oh my god he's doing it he's doing the free for free he's doing the antonio conte and boy did he and you know what it wasn't really just like the antonio conte i put out a tweet frank lampard combining conte ball with sari ball and bringing in loads of youth in between and is it working it's kind of working. So yeah, free for free. No one knew exactly how it was going to go. Was it too radically defensive? Were Chelsea going to even be good defensively? Were they going to be able to score goals? What was going to happen? Well, a lot happened and I'm going to take you through it in today's video. So let's open the analysis screen. Right, so on the graphic next to me, you can see how both teams lined up in this first half. Wolves doing their standards, free at the back system, 3-5-2. And Chelsea with the 3-4-3 free free from Frank Lampard. Have they been playing this system? We don't know, but you know what? He went out of it and it was worrying and exciting. I guess maybe at first this was to accommodate Marcus Alonso coming in at left wing back. Um, Aspilicueta, right wing back. I'd, I'd prefer him a right centre back, I said to myself before the game started. Three centre backs at the back. Christensen in the middle playing the sweeper role, which he actually played really well under Antonio Conte. And he was flanked by both Tomori and a certain Antonio Rudiger who came back into the lineup. The midfield two consisted of Jorginho and Kovacic and the front three was Mr. Tammy Abraham up front with Willian and Mount on the flanks and often rotating. Now I can't speak much for shape-shifting formation like Frank Lampard's uh, lineup usually does. I think this was a pretty rigid 3-4-3 that obviously goes to five at the back when defending. Cool so the game kicked off with a lot of Wolves aggression and assertiveness. Now I think this was a deliberate tactic from Nuno Espirito Santo saying to the players at the beginning of halves, this Chelsea team can be frail when the whistle blows. Jump on them, see what happens. And they were pressing incredibly hard for probably the opening 10 minutes or so. And then they sat off and went, no, let's revert to type and let's do our ting. And come sort of 10 minutes into this game, Chelsea look really comfortable in this 3-4-3. Now, I know a few of the players have done it before, but not all of them. And suddenly, everyone looks like they're occupying the right space. And there's wider combinations as opposed to what you'd usually see uh, under Lampard or even Sari. There's a sort of bigger spaces, but really comfortable combinations and safety in possession. So at this point, I'm thinking, has Frank Lampard been training this behind the scenes for a while? Because it certainly looked like they were very comfortable with it. So yeah, like I said, a little bit into the game, Wolves do stop the press and they revert to their type, their defensive counter-attacking football. Chelsea are playing it along the back and they're trying to coax them out, but Wolves ain't buying. They're sitting patiently, they're waiting for their chance and they're breaking or developing a build-up play when they turn over possession. About a quarter of an hour into the game, I was thinking, man, Wolves are one of the best teams without the ball. They are so smart out of possession in terms of how they play a high line, how they move together in a block. They just seem really smart. I mean, things changed in this game. I'm just talking about what I saw at the time. So in terms of game plan, I saw about the 20 minute mark that Willian was the player to play on the shoulder that was trying to run in behind from the long balls. Mount was the player that was dropping deep, combining and rotating and Tammy was doing the sort of all-round generic centre forward play. And around the same time in the 20th minute Chelsea get a call and Rudy, Antonio Rudiger, nearly scores a proper naughty little flick uh, at the near post but it gets deflected out front of the corner and nothing comes of it. But nice! 29th minute comes, Willian creates a good chance for himself but instead of passing it to Mount first time for what probably would be a certain goal in my opinion, he takes a shot on and blazes over. He's probably desperate for a goal, Willian, to prove that there's still life in the old dog. Before I move on to the next part of this half, I want to say Chelsea have been really impressive defensively in the opening half hour. They look solid against a team at home in Wolves that can absolutely threaten you. So suddenly, 
I don't have those Chelsea nerves or Chelsea spectator nerves. I'm thinking, yeah, they're doing bits here defensively, you know? 31st minute, oh my god. Chelsea mess up a set piece, it goes wrong, it goes out really far. Tomori picks it up as a little wonder, probably about 30 yards out, just bangs it. Rocket, goal. Golazo! To be honest, the keeper might be feeling he can do a little bit better there, but he's not expecting a centre back to hit that ball there and like that. It's a superb hit, long range rocket. Tomori's first goal for Chelsea. Beautiful scenes away at Molyneux. I was still probably doing my tweet about Tomori's thunder boop, goal, and yes, another Chelsea goal comes. 34th minute, Tomori is full of confidence, mere minutes away from his wonderful Chelsea goal. Brings the ball forward, plays the ball into Mason Mount in the box, who's turning, probably gets fouled to what would be a Chelsea penalty. But then the ball falls to Tammy Abraham, who picks it up, does what he does best, spins 180 and bangs it across the goal. Superb finish, 2-0 Chelsea, another goal for Tammy Abraham in his Premier League campaign. Looking absolutely superb in this game. Come about the 39th minute, Wolves are having a few chances here and there, although Chelsea have absolutely dominated for the most part. Yota misses out just a little bit from getting a goal. They have been looking frustrated since going 2-0 down, putting in niggly fouls on the Chelsea players, but they're a professional team, Wolves, and they've gained composure again, and they're trying to carve out chances and be sensible in possession. Doesn't matter, though, because the 41st minute comes and Tammy Abraham go lo 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 Third brace in a row for Tammy Abraham, or third consecutive brace at this point. Marcus Alonso puts in a lovely ball. Tammy Abraham scores a lovely header. At this point, Jan is having a lovely time. This half essentially consisted of Chelsea domination, but Jimenez does put in a good Wolves chance and just misses in the dying seconds of the half. But the half indeed does end 3-0 Chelsea. All right, so I've put the halftime statistics on the graphic up next to me. And as you can see, Chelsea dominated in terms of shots. They even had the lion's share of possession as well, which is impressive away at Wolves. And before we do get into the second half, I want to speak about a few player performances like I usually do, but this time it is bloody hard. And I'll tell you why, because everyone was really good in this half. And in this half, even the Chelsea Twitter boo boys like Marcus Alonso and Willian were very, very good. But superstar notable performances, obviously Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount was yet again excellent for me. And Jorginho, a bit of an unsung hero in this half, but I thought he was superb. Obviously the defenders really good as well, especially Rudiger and Tomori coming in, Tomori with the goal as well. But shout out to Kovacic, played well, and Azpilicueta as well. I mean, the in terms of a team performance, sublime. Wonderful scenes at Molyneux in the opening 45 minutes. Right, let's get into the second half. Up on the graphic next to me, I've put the players on that finish that half, the lineup I'm in. The opening minutes is a bit niggly again. Wolves have come out trying to force the issue. They're fouling Chelsea quite a lot and they're being a little bit erratic on the ball. In the opening stages, Wolves have probably had the better of it, the way they're jumping on Chelsea, but you can see they're really frustrated and it's actually starting to affect their play. Like I said, they're conceding fouls and Jimenez is doing offside runs which is you know he's usually pretty good at timing his runs but 10-ish minutes into the half Mount's starting to flex his technical guns and he's finding all sorts of pockets of space and is looking like a little bit of a superstar as he has been all season but the 55th minute he has done it yes Tammy Abraham Chelsea's numero nine got the hat trick and he does it all by himself. He gets the ball, he keeps possession, he uses muscle, he does a little trick. Connor Cody doesn't know what day it is, he muscles him off, he holds the ball up, he pulls it forward and he rifles it to the far post and it's an excellent finish. No goalkeeper saving that. What a goal to complete your hat trick. What a day for Tammy Abraham. What a player. 4 nil Chelsea at this point, blimey. Wolves are a great team, okay, they are, of course, they're without a win in the Premier League this season, but they are a really, really good team and they're hard to break down and when they're at home, they're very, very good. They're on some mega unbeaten run at home. So 4-0 for this unsettled Chelsea side. It's just insane. It blew my mind. 58th minute, Wolves nearly get one back. They put a ball across the face of goal and if studs were a little bit longer, they may have actually got one back at this point. So Wolves are frustrated and you can see it in their game, but their heads do not drop. And I've just got to say at this point, even at 4-0 down, credit to Wolves the way they play they basically they have something that 
probably a lot of top six sides are lacking in terms of that team spirit and never die. Something that Chelsea certainly used to have of teams of old, I guess. The opening 20 minutes of the second half, bar Tammy Abraham's excellent hat-trick goal, has been Wolves piling on the pressure on Chelsea, really trying to force the issue and Chelsea maybe being a bit more passive to defend what they've got, which might prove to be naive, or even that should be sensible, and it's getting to be an interesting game in terms of passages of play. 66th minute, Mason Mount gets a chance to make it five. Maybe he'll do that later. He goes around the key, but he's off balance and he should put it in the goal, but he puts it in the side netting, which is agonizing to watch, but he did really well to put himself in that position. 70th minute, Wolves do get one back. Rather frustratingly, courtesy of Roman Sice slash Tammy Abraham own goal. Frank Lampard fuming that his clean sheet is gone. To be honest, this ball's coming in. I don't know if a Kepa can do better or if Tammy Abraham's too close to him, which kind of makes it look like the own goal. I'm unsure whether to say Kepa can do better or it's Tammy's fault for being too close, but maybe it's a bit of both. And it's a silly goal to give away in that sense. 4-1 Chelsea. After conceding the goal, Lampard makes his substitution. Mateo Kovacic makes way for Ross Barkley for fresh legs and hopefully a bit more muscle to settle the game down. Although, to be honest, I think Nuno Espirito Santo thinks the game has gone at this point. He's taken off Jimenez. He's taken off Trey Aure. He's letting a couple of kids play, which is actually working as a positive in hindsight because they're expressing themselves a bit more and the pressure's off. And it's actually rattling Chelsea. 75th minute, Wolves win yet another corner and they're seeing a lot of joy down Marcus Alonso's side. They're getting a lot of corners, they're Get winning a lot of fouls there. He's starting to be run ragged and they're definitely targeting him. Chelsea survive a few minutes and in the 76th minute, Michy Batshuayi comes on for the hat-trick hero, Tammy Abraham, who makes way and goes to sit on the bench after maybe getting a bit of cramp. 80th minute, Mason Mount takes a free kick, puts in a beautiful ball that Kurt Zuma rises for like a salmon, meets it well with his head and only just fires it over. 83rd minute, as Plaquetta plays a ball right across the face of the Wolves goal, no one's there to convert. It's frustrating moments like that that's happened quite a few times for Chelsea this season. 84th minute, Barkley and Michy Batshuayi combine, but Michy Batshuayi can only force a save from the Wolves keeper. And and agonizingly seconds later Wolves go up the other end and score a goal. They force a good save from Kepa but the rebounds immediately snuffed up and the scoreline then goes to 4-2 and a few eyebrows start raising in the crowd. 88th minute much like the chance with Kurt Zuma Mason Mount plays in another excellent free kick to this time it goes to Michy Batshuayi who puts it just over yet again. Rather frustratingly the game goes into six minutes extra time and you know what I want to take this opportunity to pros Wolves again because they're sort of down but they're not out they're absolutely giving everything they're putting their foot on the gas even in this stoppage time because they think they can score two goals and get something out of this game and credit to them and maybe they could have but credit to them but in the dying seconds of stoppage time that boy again Mason Mount scores yet another goal for Chelsea combines with Michy Batshuayi scores a lovely goal in the far corner and you know what it's three goals and four games for that number 10, number 8, midfielder, wide player, superstar kid, and God bless him, he's doing well for the Chelsea. This thriller ends Chelsea 5, Wolves 2. I've put the full-time statistics up on the graphic next to me while I want to talk about this half quickly. So, it's a really interesting second half. Obviously, Mason Mount scored that superb goal at the end. Obviously, Tammy Abraham completed what was a wonderful hat-trick with a wonderful third goal. But there's a lot of worrying points in this second half. Chelsea did concede two frustrating goals yet again. Now, was that a psychological approach that was wrong, maybe? Did they think, right, let's sit back and defend what we've got, which should be smart, right? It should be smart, but maybe it wasn't. Maybe they needed to keep the same mentality. Chelsea seemed to have a problem in second halves, either at the beginning of second halves or late in second halves, where a shift changes. Sure, he might concede a goal um, to the opposition. That can just happen, but there's a little bit of lack of professionalism there. But I guess you can forgive that. It's a young side. It's a young coach. Everyone's learning. But apart from some sort of frustrating issues from that second half, generally, you know, they're drowning in positives from this whole game. All right, so let's wind it down, talk about the game a bit more and get rid of the analysis screen. Frank Lampard came to Chelsea and we were all talking about his pragmatism, how he wants to change and do different approaches, different players, depending on the opposition. And this game is that personified. He looked at his players, he looked at the opposition, he looked at how the game was going to go, he looked at 
how his team's already played in recent in the recent past and you you know what i'm gonna play like this but we're gonna apply our own sort of tactical approach to maybe Conte's 3-4-3 three, three, and we're gonna make it a little bit special. It worked a treat, the chemistry was on point, apart from the two silly goals, in terms of the general defensive performance, it was superb. When Rudiger was on the pitch in the first half with Tamori and Christensen, it felt safe. It genuinely did, it felt safe. The midfield wasn't lacking from it, there's still superb combinations. Kovacic carried the ball very well, he progressed it well. Jorginho was excellent for me. The fullbacks, um, or the wingbacks, were good in the first half. Alonso was definitely a weak link in the second, but that was okay. That was just a problem that the team had to suffer in that instance, which was fine. Maybe Willian flagged a little bit in the second half as well. But the theme continued in terms of the attack. Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount, superb. And what a lovely cherry on top for Tamori to get that Thunder Rocket goal as well in his first goal for Chelsea, with generally what was a good defensive performance from the lad. This game is a huge statement for Frank Lampard and Chelsea and is putting down a marker for top four, I think. It's showing, look, we are finding our way, we've had some bad results, we've had some bad reflections on our performances, but really we're doing something here and we're not too idealistic to stick to one thing and Frank Lampard has basically demonstrated yet again he is a pragmatist and he will do whatever it takes to win while still playing the youth and scoring goals. So it was just lovely scenes for Chelsea. Anyway guys, what did you think? Let me know, get down in the comments. How much did you enjoy this game? Tell me about who you think did notable performances, who was lacking, who was good, who should come in. Should Frank Lampard stick with this formation? Or are you gonna feel, I don't know, worried if he goes back to his old formation against a bigger team? So many questions, get down in the comments. If you have enjoyed today's video guys, remember please do like the video and why not subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media, remember, at Football Yannick, that is at Football Yannick on Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me guys, I'm out, I had a lovely time today. You lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me back.